out in the woods it's just beautiful out here but a great time to cut and complete some habitat work and today we're looking at different kinds of travel corridors that you can make for deer bring them right to your bow stand we're going to show the stand and how we're using the woods and the timber in this area and the habitat to manipulate exactly where the deer travel now there's some things you can do good and bad when it comes to cutting travel corridors i'll give you this example first this is uh this is a corridor we made through here by tying a lot of the young growth around here so that we can actually funnel the deer through these hoops in this tied travel corridor. See, we've tied everything off, we pulled everything together, and we're making this corridor for the deer to travel on. Now I'm here to tell you, this, this kind of travel corridor work works in, say, northern Ohio, where you might have 40 acres, and then in one to two miles in any direction, there's barely a tree. So there's hardly any cover out there you're trying to really pack a lot of deer into a small area. And you have young growth, for example. So you can tunnel these deer. You can make these, these travel corridors very tight, very narrow, tie them together with young growth, and you could promote this, this corridor for them. On the other hand, out here, we're in an area, we're in southwest Wisconsin, where it's about 60% woods and 40% ag. Deer are used to space. They do not want to be confined. Uh, for example, a bu Buffalo County been on client properties up there, big rolling timber, kind of like here. And at one in particular last year where they had paid someone to come in and you know, make these tied hoop and travel corridors. Now those working areas are some areas of lower Michigan where it's flat and there's not a lot of cover, northern Ohio, northern Indiana, northern Illinois, south, you know, southern portion of Wisconsin. Unfortunately, in about 90% of the whitetail range across the north half of the country, they do not work. So there's a big area in lower Michigan they might work, northern Ohio. These tied travel corridors in this location will not work. Now, if you have enough cover where you can tunnel them in pretty tight, then it's gonna be so tight, the deer won't wanna use it, especially a big buck uh, traveling through there, just use a lot more space. And in the case of this area, yeah, we've, we've tied these trees together and we're promoting this canopy. We'll even get some growth in the summertime, but unfortunately, when it's here in the fall or winter, it's just wide open. So the deer that are traveling in here are not more hidden, they're not safe, they can see you out from the other side of the hollow, 300 yards away, and so they're really not protected. So what we need to do in this place, we need to put some timber on the ground. We need to hinge cut away from this trail on both sides, and we're gonna show you how to do that. But folks, if you have a high percentage of cover on your land, and most northern, uh, northern states in the north half of the country, um, if the area that you're working on is, say, 70, 80% ag or more, this might work for you if you have enough growth to hide them in. But other than that, I wouldn't recommend this method right here. Um, we're gonna take some hinge cuts here. We're gonna create a pretty cool buck zone in this area and, uh, and follow along. We're gonna show it from the tree stand and how it relates to the stand. And we're gonna move deer right through here very easily. We're gonna stick a camera on it after we leave, but pretty easy to do. You wanna put your, create your hinge cuts low. We'll talk about that in a little bit so that the browse is at head level and also the cover's at uh, head level to the deer. So we'll show you how to do that. And uh, we're excited to bring this little project to you today.
tied travel cord and we actually cut it out. Um, cut the rope, release these little trees right here, and we actually gave this corridor some side cover. Not only side cover, but browse. So when this grows back up here in the summer, it's gonna create a very soft edge. And there'll be, deer can travel through here, they're hidden from this side, this side, and then they have browse at head level. And that's the whole idea. And what we're trying to do is, we have a stand location right over here. We're actually gonna add another travel corridor here in a second. And then we have this one right here. So we have deer coming in from this corridor. This corridor actually points to another stand location over there about 100 yards away. We have this corridor shooting out right here, which actually points to another stand location. And then we have this corridor over here that this stand location uh, can look into. But bottom line, they all come right here. And then this is a bedding area that we've created on top of this, um, on top of this ridge point. So we have a bench here. A lower bench, we're going to uh, continue the bedding area here in a little bit, we'll show you that. But we're putting it all together, so right where the camera's sitting, this is in the middle of that star of movement that comes into this, this zone right here. You can shoot to it from there. These two travel corridors shoot to stands. And if you can see through here, we pinched a lot of these trees, so they're between waist and neck high at the most, but the cuts are more waist to belly high. It's what, what that's good for is when, when this tree side sprouts and regenerates, then we're getting a lot of food coming up here. And it's not only food, but it's can, going to continue to hide the deer. You can see a lot of these trees that we were tying over before in the, in the young brush, I'd rather they're just in here in this corridor to be rubbed on by bucks. There'll be scraping opportunity, rubs, and I feel it's a little bit more natural having these trees. We're not cutting every tree down. You can even see on here, we've cut a few trees down that creates a nice brush pile over here. Deer will bed along these edges, but again, food. We have the side cover it needs. We get out here to the opening. It's a little bit more natural area. We get a lot of scraping activity around these shrubs, and this just serves as a wide funnel to push deer right through that corridor. Now, if they come in from the other side, that's fine too. Either one points to another stand. And so we have a system, and a system of, um, supporting stands up here, complimentary stands that we can hunt this one for morning with southwest winds. We can hunt this one for morning or evening with northerly winds. We can hunt this one for south, southeast, southwest winds, south winds in the evening. So if we have a nice buck moving through here, we should be able to get them in one of these stand locations. But this travel corridor and that travel corridor and the one over there will serve to set it all up.